from as long as my mother, not me, can remember, I've been obsessed with the automobile. I would beg her to go out and pretend I was driving her AMC horn at the driveway, and I couldn't even see over the dashboard. To say John Wingle has a passion for cars is true, but an understatement. He is an auto advocate. I've always tended to root for the underdog. After 30 years of working at dealerships, Wingle took a leap of faith and opened his own garage specializing in orphan vehicles. The textbook definition is a car that is produced or was produced by a manufacturer that's no longer in business. I try to buy a car that's running, driving, passes inspection, but might need a little bit of work to bring it to the next level. Wingle makes the necessary repairs and replacements to restore the car to its original condition. I like the car to be the way it was when it left the factory, whatever year that may have been. Factory, correct, original. I don't like modifications of any kind. Wingle's Abington Garage is filled with vintage vehicles from the 50s and 60s, including a Studebaker Lark, Nash Rambler, and Chevy Corvair, some for sale, some part of his personal collection, and some that have driven in both of those lanes. I'm a passionate collector of vintage cars, so when I find a car, my immediate instinct is, oh, I want that for myself. But I also have to think of the business. so. We need to pay the rent and the lights. When pressed to pick one to take for a ride, Wingle selected a 1959 Edsel Ranger. It's like 1959 all over again. The Edsel has a reputation of being a lemon. The Edsel's not a lemon. The Edsel was no more unreliable than any American car from that day. It had controversial styling, which a lot of people were turned off by, and that was probably its biggest failure. Wingle is proud to provide a second lease on life for cars that others overlook. These cars were born before all of us here in this room, and they're probably going to outlive all of us, as well as they should. So it's my job as a caretaker to make sure that these live on beyond us. A lot of people that come to me to buy a car, they buy it from me because they have a connection. Their mother had one, their grandmother had one, their next door neighbor, they learned how to drive in one. I feel so incredibly lucky that at 52 years old, I'm able to do this. If you have a passion, do the best you can to follow it, follow your dreams, and that's what I've done here. There's no shortage of devotion and drive inside Bill and Patrick Shea's Hubbardston Garage. I've always loved cars. I mean, the day I turned 16, I bought my very first car. It was a 1937 Ford. I paid $5 a week for 12 weeks, a total of $60 for the car. And that was before I even had my license. Certainly was in his DNA, and that transferred to me, no question about it. I, I am uh, definitely uh, a f car fanatic. During the day, this father-son duo runs their family business, buying and selling military antiques. Very, very proud that we can actually spend time doing something that we love so much together. And they're off the clock. This pair shares another passion. The first cruising night we went to, we were the only DeLorean on the lot. People don't walk by a DeLorean. They stop, they look. So I knew we had a winner. The DeLorean Motor Company, formed in 1975, only produced one model, this stainless steel two-door coupe with gull-style doors. The car was featured in the 1985 movie, Back to the Future. And after a number of years, we said, well, maybe we should think about adding something to it. So. I said, flux capacitor. We bought it, went to the next cruise night, done. It was like, OMG, people fell in love. We decided to take our perfectly good DeLorean and turn it into a time machine. It started everything. Since converting their DeLorean into a Back to the Future time machine tribute, the Shays have added to their fleet four vehicles that were actually in the movie series. The one behind us is a very significant car to the trilogy. It was used as the stunt car for all three movies. There's also the 1985 Toyota SR5 Extra Cab 4x4, driven by Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future 2 and 3. And Doc's car, the 1949 Packard, used in all three films, plus... It's uh, 
very, very unique vehicle because it was used for some off-roading. They made it into a dune buggy. The piece de resistance, the Part 3 desert car. I had the notoriety of having paid the most money ever for a DeLorean motor car. With the auction fees, it was uh, <clears throat> $541,200. These Back to the Future fanatics live their lives at 88 miles an hour, pouring their passion into prop preservation and precisely assemble replicas that they proudly share with others. Tours usually last a couple of hours. We've loved sharing with their friends and families. We've had plenty of opportunities to sell stuff, but we really don't want to. And part of that is because I know how much enjoyment it brings to my family and to the people that come here. So cool. And Bill and Patrick Shea offered tours of their collection by appointment. Bill says several actors who appeared in smaller roles in the first Back to the Future film recently visited the farm to enjoy the collection. And back to the orphan car garage, John Wingle says he has sold cars all over the country, and recently one of his cars was shipped to Paris. Wingle says he is also starting to see an increase in a new generation of collectors looking for classic cars from the 80s. That gives him hope that others see the same value in the vehicles that he does.